presenting Channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we just had a little scare here. All the power went off on my street, and <laughs> so it's like there was a question whether we'd even be able to have the show. I don't know what the heck. If that's you, Eric, you're you are busted, man. Uh, anyway, for those of you guys who don't already know, uh, Eric Medhus is the person, the man of the hour that we're going to speak with. He is my 20-year-old son who died a few years ago, and. Uh, now, as a spirit guide, he helps people all over the world navigate through the human experience uh, using his blog, Channeling Eric, as a platform. You guys need to check out Channeling Eric. Now, this radio show is our way of spreading all that Eric love and wisdom even further. And by reaching through the veil with the help of his spirit translator, the one, the only, Kim Babcock, Eric can help you find the answers you need to make your walk of life a little easier. Uh, first, we're going to get him to share a little uh, discussion with us, a little bit of his wisdom, and then he'll accept questions from you listeners. Now, if you do want to ask Eric something, and there's already a lot of callers on, I see, please give us uh, a ring at 619-639-4606. And I'd like to introduce Kim. Kim, tell us uh, how people can connect with you. Thank you. Well, you can find me on social media all across the board. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, and you can find me on Facebook at Kim Babcock. And you can also um, learn a little more about me through my website, and that's www.kimbabcock.net. And feel free to look around, um, see what I'm all about. I've been doing um, mediumship, practicing my mediumship, and doing various types of readings for about the last six to seven years now and absolutely love what I do. And more recently joined the Channeling Eric team and I'm so happy to be here for all of you and to be a voice for Eric, to connect Eric to all of you to answer your questions tonight. And Eric, hi sweetie, I love you. He says, hi mama, I love you too. <laughs> How are you so, doing sweetie pie? He's being pretty playful. He's feeling, um, he says he's feeling froggy. <laughs> so Froggy? What the heck Hopefully he won't make mean? it too interesting tonight. <laughs> oh, God. I I think he already probably has. Now, I Eric, you want to talk? I think so, too. Uh, you want to talk about how human beings struggle with uh, or resist change. The floor is yours. He says, yep, that's right, Mom. He says, a lot of people, he says, this is one thing a lot of people can relate to. So the more I can talk about stuff that people can relate to by the masses, the better I'm doing my job as a guide, he says. He says, one thing I want to talk about for all of you is why change is so hard and why we tend to uh, resist change. Why is it so natural for us to resist change and have a I hard thought it was just because we... I was getting old. I thought I, I think it's just because I'm old now. It's hard <laughs> to like, change. It's hard to change he, when you're old. He says I. He goes no comment. <laughs> Great. Oh, you're goodness. supposed to come back with, oh, mom, you're a spring chicken. No. <laughs> but go ahead. He, he says. Um, he says, well, you know, there's there's so every if you truly look around you. Everything around you is constantly changing, um, but sometimes change can come in bigger ways or more subtle ways. Um, but it, it's up; it's truly up to you as far as how you deal with that change. People often say, "Well, change is hard. I'm used to my routine, or I'm used to it being like this, and change is hard." So he says, "Change really isn't the hard part." The hard part is you accepting the change. When you when you actually resist the change, that's when it hurts. That's when it's hard. That's when it becomes painful. He's also talking about if you can shift your perspective. He says if you 
if you look at, at things differently and the way they're changing, then the way they change is different. So it, it's like he says, it's about shifting your perspective through the things that you see changing. So instead of resisting change, surrender to it, accept change as it happens, and there will be less pain, less discomfort, he says. Um, but a lot of that's about surrendering and surrendering control. And he's been on this um, this kick all week about surrendering, but um, also realizing that what you resist will persist. As long as you put that energy into resisting it, it will continue until you stop. Well, you know, you've talked about how, you you have talked about how resistance is what is at the root of suffering, too. That people only suffer because they resist their pain. He says that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's that's why there's pain. That's where pain comes from, is that resistance. Ah. And he says... When when you resist something and you resist it and resist it and you put that energy into it, the energy you're putting into it, trying to resist it, is, is really only helping it exist. But on the other hand, if you surrender to what it is, change, he says in parentheses, <laughs> he says if you <laughs> surrender, then you're no longer giving it energy. You're no longer resisting it. And wow. then that's how... You can create change in a, uh, without pain, but the pain. Well, comes why do we have trouble reason. with that? Well, why why do we resist? If it's he that says, hard, why? He he says he scratches his head and he says, um, "We're all control freaks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because we like to true. have a say in everything. We like to have a say in how this is going to happen, how that's going to happen, and." Uh, what's going to happen next for us? We're, we're control freaks. We're, we want to know. we got to know. we got to be in control. And that in itself, he says, is uh, that's an attachment to control, needing to have that control. So if you can let go of that by surrendering that need, um, it's going to be less painful, he says. So he says, for as all of you... Look around and, and analyze different aspects and dynamics of your life and see, try to take a second look, he says, and see where you're resisting change. Where are you resisting change? If you change the way you look at something, then, he says, if you change the way you look at something, then you change the way, no, no, okay, sorry, he's getting pretty wordy. If you change the way you look okay. at something, then the way it looks to you will change. So the way it's happening, the way you perceive it will change. But you have to be willing to alter your perspective. You have to be open. He says oftentimes people aren't even willing to open their mind up a little bit. They want to operate and stay inside of this teeny tiny little box called their own personal comfort zone, their own personal framework. But once you well, break you through that... Can you walk through an example? No, maybe it help if you walk us through some sort of example, Eric. He says, absolutely. He says, um, for example, if you're struggling in your marriage, if you're struggling in your relationship and you think, I just want this to change, I'm not happy, everything just seems so repetitive and there, it's so dry, there's nothing here, and I'm unhappy, I'm unhappy, I'm, I'm unhappy. But if you change the way you look at the marriage, if you change your perspective in it, then the way it looks to you is going to change. The way you perceive it is going to change. But if you're not willing to take a second look from another angle, you're not going to see anything different. Nothing's going to change. It's uh, allowing change is, he says, two things. Resisting change is what causes pain, and allowing change is what fosters growth. So if you if you can't even allow change, how do you he says how do you he's shrugging his shoulders. He says, how do you really think you can grow? How do you really think things can get better if you don't allow that change? That's so, true. But what can the what how can the person look at the marriage differently? What might they be looking at? 
for example, he says, um, let's say you and your spouse are just fighting a lot, and you're fighting all the time, and you're just, you're not showing compassion like you used to, and love and affection like you used to. Mm-hmm. And so then you begin to think, you know, you're going to clock out, it's the end of your work day, it's time to go home, and you think, well, crap, it's just going to be another miserable night, we're unhappy, we've been fighting all the time. So you're looking at it the same way. You're you're prefacing the whole encounter. You're going into that whole encounter the same way as the night before and the night before, and it's easy to do. It's easy to get stuck in that routine, no matter what it is, even if you're thinking about your job. Well, i got a crappy job, and I'm going to go to work, and it's going to be miserable again. But if you're not willing to change the way you see it, thinking, well, maybe I'm going to go to work today. Maybe something different will happen, or maybe today's going to be a little more productive, or maybe I'm going to come home from work and everyone's going to be in a little bit better mood and I'm really going to try to show affection even though it's hard and I may not feel like it. He says, if you're not willing to... What's that? Sometimes you got to fake it till you make it. He says, Mom, that's true. (laughs) He shrugs his his shoulders (laughs) and he says, "When when you are willing to open your mind and make that conscious, that shift in your consciousness and the way you see things, then you're allowing change to occur and mm. not resisting it. He says it's all about opening up your mind um, and changing your perspective. That makes He's sense. Just shaking I his want to head. Remind- says, oh, go ahead. Go He's ahead. just shaking his head. He said, oh, there's so many out there that that's so hard for them to do because they just think it should be like this, and, well, I think it should be like that. And he says there people can really be stuck inside their own conditioning and their own framework. But you got to be willing to break down those barriers a little bit and be be moved and guided by the situations around you. Change your perspective, he says. Yeah, so much is just about a shift in perspective. If I get aggravated with my husband, I just have to start thinking about all the wonderful things about him, how honest and loyal and how capable and uh, loving he is and how he has my back no matter what. So, uh, yeah, absolutely, uh, it, it really works. And all of a sudden you see that person differently. He says, that's what, that's what I'm talking about, Mom. If you can change the way you look at something, then the way it looks to you changes. The way you perceive mm-hmm. it changes. And then in that, in those moments you're allowing change to occur. <laughs> he looked at me and he says, he goes, God, I don't think I've ever said change so many times in a row. <laughs> I know. Oh, but it's so true. You know, I, I've I've experienced that, that too um, sometimes. You know, if, if you approach things differently than what you're used to or what your routine is, um, change your routine up a little bit and see how that shifts your perspective. Definitely helps. That's wise words, Eric, wise words. I know. He says, I got more where that came from. (laughs) I know you do, sweetie. I know. We're going to milk you for everything you got, too, over the course of time. So listen, guys, I want to let you guys know that we are on the air, courtesy of LiveParanormal.com. So check out their other shows, LiveParanormal.com. Eric, are you ready to take callers? I'm always ready, Mom. Are you? (laughs) Yeah, how about Kim? Kim, are you ready? Ready to rock I'm and roll? I'm ready. Let's do it. I'm excited to see who's on the line. And me too. And I want to ask all the callers to try to keep it. We want to try to get some more callers than we did last time. So maybe keep your question short and limited to one question. That way a lot of people will, will get a chance to ask Eric questions. And first we're going to yeah. go to somebody from the 347 area code. Let's see who we have here. Hi, you're on the air. Oh, wow. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm the first one. That's great. <laughs> you are. The, you you must have had that 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 V doll just boom ready to go at 15 before the hour. All yeah. The what is your name and where are you from? Uh, I'm your Jillian name? from New York. Jillian. 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 That's Jillian, Eric's yeah. girlfriend. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well. well Welcome to the show. I had a a dream that I was his girlfriend, actually, so. (laughs) What's that now? Um, Oh. I said I had a dream that I was 
Mr. Sorry's girlfriend. Oh, wow. Um, that is something. Yeah, so I know it is. Um, so I just wanted to see if Eric can help me with uh, my channeling. And um, I've been reading for people, but um, I want to be able to get awesome. go deeper. And um, and if he can throw some information out there also about my allergies. I mean, I liked what he said about changing my perspective, and I think maybe that's going to be the answer, but um, it would be nice to get an answer about that too. All right, what do you think, Eric? Thank you so much for calling in. Um, Eric says, um, he says, one thing I want you to think about, all you channelers out there, he says, um, if you want to... And he, He's kind of laughing because he's like, I'm going to sound like your mom here. But he says, if you want to increase your ability to channel, whether it's through clairvoyance, clairaudience, whatever it is, he he says, the power is, and he's talking and it's echoing like he's almighty. He says, the power is in (laughs) hydration. That's one of the keys. Okay? He says, one of the tangible things that you can actually go and do is make sure you drink Water, plenty of water, because water is um, it's a conduit. It helps it helps energy flow through you. Um, in well, that many makes ways. sense. He says so. Staying well hydrated is going to allow you to bring in more energies and a variety of of energies in a variety of ways. So, first and foremost, for you specifically, he says to hydrate. Um, would that and help for allergies also, too? Yeah, he's also saying that um, staying better hydrated is. Um, <laughs> this is funny. He's getting real specific about the membranes and in, in the nasal area, but he says that hydration is going to be important in that aspect too, to help you deal with your allergies. Um, but he he also wanted to say um, that you're right in thinking you shift your perspective a little bit in the way you approach your channeling, then you're going to be able to open up more. But what he means is is if you want to channel mainly through clairvoyance, then put all of your consciousness there. Put all of your awareness. He says put all of your awareness at your third eye when you channel. Or put all of your awareness on your heart chakra when you channel. And when you do that, when you shift and kind of toy around and play around with where you put your awareness, you're going to see your information flow better, and you're going to see it. You're going to see clarity with it. He says. Um, he just keeps saying with allergies. He just keeps saying flush, flush, flush. Um, so it. it <laughs> He's recommending like a saline flush, but he says hydration is going to be more important, internal hydration and helping your body deal with and battle um, allergies. So I hope that that helps. I hope that that answers your questions. That helps and answers my questions. I've been feeling like I need to drink lots more water, so that's what I've been doing. So, yeah, perfect. Perfect. You were probably channeling him. Who knows? Yes, I am. He's, I think he's come and pranked me a few times, and um, I love oh, you guys. Gosh. I've I don't know. I was led to to your to your site, and for some reason, and um, I've been like watching you, and uh, it's been awesome, very helpful. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks thank for you calling so much in for calling. In. Yes, no problem. Bye. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. So, you know, it's really interesting. Uh, I find that there's a lot of mediums out there that Eric is helping uh, working with to improve their gifts. Yeah, and it seems like, you know, through through many different clients, through people I interact with um, on social media, they're all beginning to um, be able to achieve, you know, a higher vibration. And I definitely... Mm think he is responsible. It, you know, he's wanting this this larger effect in helping people live a human experience with um, higher higher spiritual development, higher sense of awareness. Um, so it's really cool to see people change and evolve and and grow in their spirituality, and how that helps them kind of deal with the whole human experience. It's pretty powerful. 
Well, it sure has helped me a lot. The more I learn spiritually and evolve spiritually, the more healing I receive. Absolutely. Oh. Ready to take the next caller? Sure. Let's see who we got. All right. We have somebody from the 805 area code. What is your first Hi, name? Hi, Alyssa. Hi. How are you? Hi. 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 My name is Tiki. How are you tonight? Oh, cool. Hi, Good. Tiki. Hi, Tiki. Yeah, great. I do like it. I love your name. Where are you calling oh, from? Um, I'm from California, um, um, okay. Ventura County. I'm okay. calling because I wouldn't Lucky want you. to know if I'm... Yeah. Hi, Eric. How are you? He says, hello, Tiki. He says, I'm <laughs> mighty fine. <laughs> I was wondering um, if I'm a starcy. I love he that says, question. I do, too. Um, he says, yes, indeed. Um, he keeps calling you a server, server, server. Um, <laughs> are you a teacher? Are you teaching? No, I'm not a teacher, um, but... I do a lot of serving to the community. Like I'm doing, I do things for people constantly. Okay, because he's um, he makes me feel like you're going to be teaching um, or instructing in some way, guiding, like verbally, uh, physically guiding people. So in the oh. sense of of some sort of leadership role. Um, oh. But he says um, he just keeps repeating. Um, you are a star seed, you're a server, and then he says teaching. She's going to be teaching, Kim. Tell her. <laughs> oh, so what ga- galaxy. Yeah. What constellation is she from? See, it sounds like Ceres. Siri, oh, Sirius? Oh, Sirius. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think uh, one of my sons and one of my daughters, uh, my other son and one of my daughters is from Sirius, apparently. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah, so, so yeah, y'all might have been neighbors over there. Who knows? <laughs> I know I know Kim that I have healing qualities um, and capabilities, but does he mean that I'm going to be healing in the mediumship type thing, or just like leading people in like what, what does he mean and what it feels like? Yeah, could you as be more specific, Eric? As far as teaching, I'm sorry, T- yeah. I can't hear you very well. Yeah. Um, okay, he says. Um, you're going to be teaching people based on your um, your personal experience and the ways that you've evolved. To me, this feels like a small localized program that you're going to develop. So if it's um, even something along the lines of um, guided meditation, like you're in a leadership role where you're verbally guiding or teaching people. Um, so it feels like a a small localized group that you, it's almost like a series, like um, a six-part class or or course where, you know, phase one, phase two, phase three, we're going to learn this, this, and this. Um, mm. But it's spiritually related, spiritual development, and it, he's circling the word meditation. So based yeah. on your experience and the way you've grown through meditation, um, you will then share that, he says, with others. Oh, it's just awesome. Well, thank you very much. Right. You guys have a great evening, and I'm going to let some other people come in. And I love you, Eric, and thank you for all the help that you give me. He says, I love you. Bye. He says, thank you, Tiki. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Maybe uh, she's to um, teach healing. I mean, she seems to be captivated by the word healing. Yeah. So perhaps that's one of the things. Perhaps um, it's more than just meditation. It could be healing. But, you know, these are things that she probably has to find for herself. You're right. You Eric don't says want to you're look. right. And he says um, uh, teaching people how to meditate leads to teaching them how to connect to their self leads to healing, mm-hmm. he says. All right. Well, let's. I bet, I, I bet this person's from Austin, Texas. Let's check this one out. Hi there. How are you doing? Well, hello. How are you? I'm fine. What is your first name? This is Jeff. Yeah, are you from Austin? I am from Austin. Oh, they have the staff by stuff going on there, don't they? Yes? Oh, yeah, I know. It's crazy. Actually, I live in Georgetown, so I don't have to suffer that traffic all that much. 
Oh, good. Yes, Kim, were you trying to get in touch with me? Yep, I, it, it was breaking out, and I couldn't hear anybody uh, but you, but I think I just I heard him come on, so I think we're good. Well, uh, so, All right. so great. hello, everyone. At least it's great to hear your voice. Hi, Eric. Hey, Keep my hello. cell phone connection up, please. <laughs> <laughs> Only don't mess with it oh, like you did last time. <laughs> oh, gosh, he's already messed with us uh, this evening, so. Yeah, he goes run they, for our money. What way could Eric help you? Well, you can probably read my mind faster than I can talk, so I had so many questions. But I really wanted to ask you if we could talk to a friend of mine who joined your neighborhood lately. His name is Kyle. Oh, yeah. Um, Like bringing Kyle through that's on the other side? You're wanting to have yes, Eric exactly. through? Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Kyle Evans. Okay, so as he comes forward, um, the the impression that I'm getting as he as Kyle steps forward based on your request, um, the impression that I'm getting is he's snapping his fingers. So he says that he feels as though his passing was unexpected. It was sudden. He says, "Do you understand that?" Well, he had a pretty long illness. He's he's also saying that. Um, he feels as though he didn't have a voice or couldn't say goodbye, couldn't eat or speak. He's taking all the energy to the throat, so somehow that area was affected for him. Oh, yeah, that's certainly true, yeah. Trying to bring that forward to validate his presence. Um, so if you have a question for him, go ahead with your question. Well, yes. I mean, uh, he knows that, that there are a lot of people who miss him, especially uh, uh, Dave, and I want to know if, if there's anything he'd like to say that I could convey. He says the biggest thing for his friends and family to know, he says, look at my body, I'm restored. He says, they don't hurt anymore. And he keeps trying to show me his limbs, his body. So um, his, he wants his family to know his body's been restored. Um, I, I look like myself, he says. He, and he's conveying that he feels like he didn't look like himself or he lost his image before he passed. Well, he, uh, he lost a lot of weight. It was a cancer. He says, but that's changed. I've been I've been restored, and I need them to know I'm not in pain. He says, I'm okay. I just want them to know my transition. He's <laughs> he's going, it was smooth. You know how if you were to try to mock a Hawaiian dancer and your hands would go up and down? Um, that's oh, what yeah? Doing, that's what he's doing uh. with his hands, and he says, my transition was smooth, and I want them to know that because they don't think that. They don't. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. Um, Julie says that uh, you have uh, you've got a lot to learn, a lot to do, and you're you're not bored at all. He says, "Nope, definitely not bored." Um, he says, "Soul evolution is going to keep you busy times infinity." He's showing me the infinity symbol. So there's, uh-huh. there's always continuous soul growth that can happen. And the ways to achieve that soul growth is what keeps us busy, he says. Oh, yeah? <laughs> He's Have you been cast in any plays? I'm, he says, I'm never at a standstill over here. <laughs> All right. So, well, it, it's well, really cool you. to hear from you. He says, thank you for asking. Um, he's pulling his energy back with Eric. Um, so thank you so much for calling in, and thank you for your questions. Um, I'm happy to to help have Eric bring him forward for you. Thank you. Thank you very You're much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you for calling. That uh, was nice to hear from you. Oh, whoops, I cut him off. Sorry, I still love you. Anyway, <laughs> I have to do my usual station ID. We are on the air courtesy of the wonderful radio station, liveparanormal.com. Guys, they have so many cool uh, shows for you for you to peruse. You can just spend all day listening to some of the stuff they have on. So I really encourage you to check it out. Now, yeah. let's see who we have next here. Um, here we go. 323 area code. Who am Hello. I speaking with? Hi. This is George. Uh, this Hi, is George. George. Hi, Kim. Hi, Eric. Hey, guys. Hi, How are George. You? Um, I'm the one that designed the uh, the ad for you guys. Remember? 
Oh, I don't great. want to say my last name, Thanks. right? But <laughs> I thought I had a call. Thank you. Guys. Like, it's impossible. You're welcome. Absolutely welcome. And he so, so you he, guys, he is amazing. Oh, I'm so happy. Excellent, excellent. I'm, like, sitting in the car next to a Starbucks. I'm like, <laughs> Wait. I was driving. I had to, like, stop and pull over and, and talk to you guys. Hey, um, really, really quick. Uh, it's funny, but, uh, uh, you know, the topic about resistance and, uh, and perspective and all that stuff. So, really quick statement, and then I'll ask, you know, Mr. E what he thinks and stuff. Um, it's funny because, you know, every morning I usually go for a jog and stuff, right? And, you know, jogging is not the funnest thing in the world, right? Technically. Oh, God. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's like a pain, right? But it's funny because um, I've noticed that when you go jogging, um, at first you're like, oh, you know, like you feel like literally each leg moving. You know, like it's like, oh, it's a strain. It's like, why am I doing this? You know, all this stuff. But I've noticed that the moment I change my perspective, right, I start looking at the trees and the smell, the 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 humidity in the air, you know, and just look at the birds, and you know, that change of perspective alleviates the strain. Right, and then it becomes, I want to say, almost like a joy, right? And, uh, and I'm assuming if I continue with the adjustment of what I focus on, right, um, it'll become more of a joy, right? And uh, so my question to, to Eric and um, is pretty much, um, we literally change our world, right, when we change our perspective, Yes. He says absolutely. You, when you change your focus, and you, if when you're open-minded enough to allow that to happen, you can virtually change everything around you. Mm-hmm. And what that's what you're talking about. He says, what a great analogy. What a great way to describe that. When you're jogging, you're initially thinking, oh man, my joints are aching. This is a strain. This is difficult. But then you get in the groove of it, you change your focus to something else, and voila, <laughs> he says, then it becomes a joy if you choose to focus on the joyful things. Um, if you choose to even allow that shift to happen. But when you resist it, <laughs> he's he's calling me out because I hate to exercise, but I know I need oh, me to. Too. And I'm just like, man, if it wasn't for DOMS, you know, delayed onset muscle soreness, I could really be consistent with this stuff. But I get sore, and I'm like, why would I do that again? I'm sore. <laughs> <laughs> he, he says, um, if you can shift your focus, maybe hint, hint, shift on your results instead of, um, if you focus on the pain, that's what you're, that's all that you're going to experience. But if you focus on the gain then that's, that's going to bring you joy. That's going to be what you experience. So don't focus on the pain. Don't resist it. Focus on what you have to gain instead. He says that's why people resist change is because they're focusing on what they have to lose. But if you focus on what you have to gain, think about what you could bring into your life. Think about the way your world can change. He says it can be pretty powerful, but you also have to believe that too. So, so my point is, what what is that little mechanism that like you shift? Like I know, I know it like comes deep down inside because my uh, my wife and I sometimes we have like an uh, you know she notices I get tweaked about something, whatever it may be. I don't know what it is, and and I find that when I'm pissed off about something, not I mean I don't get pissed off, but I get a little bit annoyed, and and then I notice that the rest of my day is just going crappy because I'm just focusing on what makes me feel crappy. So because I feel crappy, I therefore see things that make me feel crappy. And that's what I kind of get. So I realize that the moment that I snap out of it, um, or I, I, I kind of like deep inside my heart or whatever it may be, it's like a little, I'm like, you have a desire because you, I would say you feel you get to the point where it's like you're that's enough. You're tired of feeling crappy, therefore you want to feel better, so then you mechanically somehow shift, right? You can do that. And yeah, he says, um He says um that is because you choose to identify it. 
if you go oh, okay. through your entire day and you think, oh, my gosh, I had a crappy morning, now the rest of my day is going to be crappy, and then everything seems to be crappy. Everything just starts to fall apart. Nothing works right. Nothing goes smoothly. But if you kind of identify why <laughs> you're being crappy or feeling crappy in the first place, then you uh, allow that shift to happen. Mm. Because it's all about identifying where it came from, identifying it. So if it's so, so then because we have that capability of recognizing right where we're at, we can literally shift to anything we kind of want, right? Does it? I mean, is it literally like? Yeah, thought creates reality. Like, you know? Yeah, literally. I mean, it thought creates reality. Seems like, yeah. So it, it's it's kind of like magnetic, right? The universe does provide what you need to f- sustain that mindset, right? Yes? He says um, absolutely. And where where thought goes, energy flows, and where energy flows, then manifestation occurs. Mm. He says so. He says to everybody out there, be careful where your thoughts go because it could be like a, a sword pointed at yourself. If you think mm-hmm. bad about yourself, about your life, or negatively about things around you, you're really just pointing that sword at yourself and helping to attract the same kind of stuff. So it's mm-hmm. making a conscious decision to try to make that change and being open-minded enough to want to and, and allow that shift to happen. So, therefore, that's our control, right? That's where we have control in creation, I guess, right? So, oh, George is a control freak. Yeah, you, George? Says, I know. I totally <laughs> am. It's out, it's out, it's out of the box, yeah. He says, yes, sir. He says that he, <laughs> Eric likes to call out. it personal power. Eric says, I like to call it personal power. <laughs> that sounds oh, a lot better. Yeah. You know, well, I'll let you guys go. I know you guys have a bunch of callers. I, I love you guys tremendously, and I want to give you guys all hugs and um Oh, and really, 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 really cool. And... Oh, thank you, know, you I, so much. Thank you. Out of Texas, I'll, I'll see you guys, and uh, I'll book a, a, a thing with you, Kim. <laughs> All right, Mister E, be good. I love you, and uh, thank you. Guys you. We love Bye. you, George. I right, love Say you too, bye. guys. Take care. Bye bye. Take care, George. <laughs> bye. All right, guys, be good. You know, it is so true, though. I I know that here recently I had a really hard time with the missing Eric kind of feeling it's really oh, down sure. but then i i thought you know i've got to shift my perspective and then i you know, i i started going through these thoughts well, look i've got my son still i can talk to him on a regular basis we still have a relationship our relationship's better and i also spread that out to look at other things that i should be so blessed to have i mean i am so blessed to have my family my friends uh, a roof over my head, and so on, and it really pulled me out of that funk. So, oh yeah, yeah. I can definitely definitely relate. You know, I'm I'm a big. Many of you out there are pro- can probably relate. I'm a big. Uh, my emotions kind of play on the weather if I let them. <laughs> so when it's mm-hmm. cloudy and gray all the time and rainy, then my personality seems to reflect that. And so it's been rainy and crappy um, today, and I'm kind of like, you know what, I'm going to have a good day instead. I'm going to choose to shift that and not let my attitude um, and my personality reflect what the weather's doing. <laughs> so it's it's all right. about making that conscious choice to try to shift and be, again, the most important thing is being open enough to want to because some people truly, I've seen people that are stuck and they don't want to. They don't want that change. They want to be miserable. It's like Abraham yeah. Lincoln said, people are as happy as they've make, made up their minds to be. And it, that, exactly. That is such a, 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 a wise quote from Yes, from, indeed, uh, it sure is. Old Abe. All right, well, let's try another caller from the 727 area code. Let's see, see who we have here. Hello. 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 You are on. What is your... Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello. What is your first name? Uh, yes, I can my hear name you. My is Julie. Hi, Julie. I'm Julie. in Mississippi. Where are you from? Hi. Mississippi. I, went I to am. Have, uh, lunch, uh, I went to have lunch with my second grader granddaughter, and her and her friends spent the almost the entire lunch hour spelling Mississippi. So <laughs> You should visit. 
<laughs> it drove me up a wall. Anyway, what question do you have for Mr. Eric? Okay. Since I was a little girl, I've had this powerful longing, like I'm missing someone. Uh, I haven't, I've never lost anyone close to me, but I've had that, just this powerful sensation that, of like longing for someone or something, and that's been coupled with another intense desire for freedom. Like I love my parents, but I always wanted to be an adult and to grow, to grow up, and I was happiest on my mm-hmm. own. I was wondering if there, if Eric can give me any insight as to why. Ooh, great question. That, I can't wait a, to hear the answer to this one. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great question. And Eric's talking about, um, first of all, the longing comes mm-hmm. from two things. He says um, the first the first part of this is um, probably the less significant part of it. He says um, uh, basically uh, identifying with self, um, mm-hmm. being connected to yourself in a stronger sense. So um, filling that void in that sense, but more so the bigger reason as to why you feel that sense of longing is because this, he's actually being pretty specific, and he says this is due to another incarnation where you lost a sister, a younger mm-hmm. sister, um, and you both were very young. He shows you as like two young young girls, probably like seven, eight years old. Um, mm-hmm. um, he, that's how old you were, and then the sister's slightly younger. And mm-hmm. um, he, God, he's being really specific about this one. Um, it's like it seems like you lost her in a drowning accident, and so then living life. Um, he says you never truly found ways to cope with and heal from that loss. So that's um, greatly impacted the way you feel in this life. Also part of filling that void, though, is um, identifying with yourself on a deeper level, so knowing who you are. And um, part of that in, in moving forward into this incarnation is also what leads to that need for independence, that need for separation from parents. I just want to be an adult on my own because Mm -hmm. the event in your past has sort of um, kind of basically like drug part of you down. Like half of you has, half of you died with your sister when you lost her. And that... He says the way that you perceive it now in this life is, you know, I want to be on my own, I want to be independent, but more so what that what's happening is wanting to be independent of um, those emotions and independent in who you are, in that stronger sense of self. So um, he's going, do you see how the two are related? Um, mm-hmm. Is saying that you need to... Um, Grab, he says, grab hold of a stronger sense of self-identification. And that in itself is um, going to help you understand why you've always had that longing to sort of be on your own, um, that self-identification. So a do you lot think it would of help this, her to have. Do you think it would help her to have, I'm sorry, past life regression? To get yep, really that's into exactly the what he was getting ready to say. <laughs> okay. A lot of this I must be failing him. Yeah, exactly, you are. He says a lot of this stems from um, past life, that what you went through in that past life. And the best ways to help you deal with it and kind of let it go, um, to separate from it so you can be organic in this incarnation, is hypnotherapy and past life regression. He says okay. you would benefit greatly from both. Is this sister, um, is she... Uh, incarnated with me in this life, or is she a guide? Um, he says, uh, before you even asked your question, when you said, is this sister, he said, nope. <laughs> um, not physical, <laughs> not in the physical sense. Um, she is still a guide. She is still here, Eric says. Um, okay. The, the, the tr- like the trauma of the way that she passed for her, she's been working on and healing from herself. He says, so consider, he, he says, consider her a guide. Okay. 
her guide? Is she consider? Yeah, he says that she is a guide for you. Okay. Okay. Does she have a name? Um. He says Erica. Oh wow! Appropriate. Um, oh yeah, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Erica, it's um, A A R I K A. He's trying to give me the spelling, Erica. Oh wow! <laughs> fancy, okay. fancy spelling there. Well, thank you for maybe your question. Maybe I said maybe I, I was foreign. <laughs> there, okay. yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate everything y'all do. You have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. You, you too. too, sweetie. Gosh, you know, Eric, Kim, I think everybody ought to delve into hypnotherapy or past life regression to figure out to what lives, well, it's not the past, but, you know, what, what concomitant lives bleed right. into ours and, and make uh, and influence it either negatively or positively. So. Right. I've always wanted to. I've never done it, but I've always wanted to do past life regression. But I'm always afraid that I'm going to be someone who's um, unhypnotizable. Is that a word? <laughs> I, that's, that's actually go too. under. I don't, think they'd, I don't think they'd be able to bring me down. I just don't. I know. I know. I'll have to try and find out, and I'll have to share with you guys I if know. I do. <laughs> All right, good. Let's do that. We'll both do it. All right, we have uh, another caller. First, I want to say for my last station ID requirement that you guys are on liveparanormal.com check out their show list it's a good one now we have somebody from the 818 area code that sounds really familiar is that Dallas? let's see who it is hi there 818 area code who am I talking to? hi there how are you? fine what is your first name? Uh, my name is Wendy. Wendy? Yes. Okay, where are you calling from? Uh, I'm calling from Maryland. Oh, Maryland. Okay, well, I was way off. I thought you were from... <laughs> for some reason, I thought it was Dallas. That's okay. But, uh, <laughs> uh, what would you like to ask yeah. Eric? Well, first off, I just want to say thank you so much, Elisa, to you, Kim, and Eric for helping so many people. I know there are so many others out there who are hurting, and just the fact that you take the time out of your day to help these people is so unbelievably noble. So thank you so much. We oh, Thank you. That really, really you. means a lot to me. You know, it really, really does. I, I sure do appreciate that. Sure. Absolutely. Um, well, I wanted to ask Eric a question. Um, Elisa, I lost my brother the same way you lost Eric. And oh, on that day, I know it's absolutely horrible. There's no words to describe how terrible oh, I know. it is. There's, there are none. Um, You're right. Yes, absolutely. And um, on that day, we had just adopted a puppy. Um, and on the day of his suicide, she was acting very, very odd. Um, mm. To summarize, she essentially went limp in my father's arms, was throwing up, vomiting. And um, I just wanted to see if you could please ask Eric to um, bring my dog forward and ask if she will. Mm. Okay, so we're asking Eric. Can you reiterate that a little bit, Elisa? That it's, it's very hard well, for me to hear down. Wendy. Well, sure, I'm she so wants sorry the about dog. That. She wants her. Wendy wants her dog to be brought forward. She wants to know if the dog, by virtue of the way uh, its behavior was, knew that the suicide was going to happen. Is that right, Wendy? Yes, that's correct. What is your okay, dog's so name? Uh, her name is Nelly. Nelly. Okay. Okay, um, Eric. First of all, he's going to do a little bit of talking. He says, absolutely, animals can sense vibration way better than humans um, in many ways. He says, when when a person's vibration is um, very, very low, depending on what they're going through, animals can sense that. He says, you know how when you're sick, your dog cr- curls up to you or just sticks by your side or when you're crying and you're sad and you're upset, your cat just follows you around and stays with you. He says that's because they're much more intuitive and they know what's going on intuitively, um, instinctively. So um, absolutely, he says, 
the way he says the way that your dog behaved is a direct reflection of its understanding of its surroundings. So um, Eric says, know that your dog was sensing and perceiving, um, basically understanding what was happening um, through through natural instincts and through um, understanding vibration. Again, he says, he says, if if anything at all, animals are better telepathic communicators than we are um, when we attempt to be. So they don't need language to understand. They they can understand what you're going through based on the emotions that you're putting off. And Eric says sometimes when the emotions are really low and really raw, it's like pollution. The vibration is like pollution in the air, and the animals can pick up on that. So he says that's what oh, your dog awesome. was experiencing. And I, I suppose they're together. Eric says um, they're together, they're comfortable, Com- comfort, content, contentment. He keeps repeating, um, it's important for you to know that, contentment. All right, well, that's great. Well, you know, unfortunately we have to close the show because one time I ran into the the next show, so it wasn't pretty. Um, uh, yeah, it's so winding down already. Wendy, th- thank you, Wendy, for being so patient, and thanks for everybody else waiting and, and being so patient. And if you didn't get your answer, your questions answered, please don't give up and just keep calling. It's every Thursday. Uh, be sure you check out Eric's book, My Life After Death, if you really want to know everything from death to what heaven looks like and so on. And check out the blog, Channeling Eric. Eric is spelled with a K. Kim's, again, Kim's uh a website if you want to check out her what she has to offer in the way of services it's kim dot net so until thursday guys Bye. remember eric says to live is to love all and i think that's a very important message thank you kim thank you everyone and eric i love you. you come visit me sweetie come thank visit you me everyone tonight. eric says love you mom bye i love you so much baby Bye-bye. Bye. Have a good night, everybody. You too.